Launch trajectory and countdown net. Pad is clear. N. Nine, eight, Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again for the Falcon Heavy webcast of the Jupiter 3 mission. I'm Ronnie Foreman, and I'm joining you to follow our Falcon Heavy rocket liftoff from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If you've been following along, you know that we stood down from Wednesday's launch attempt with an abort called around the T minus one minute mark. This was due to a valve that stuck open on one of the side boosters, preventing us from performing pressurization of a rocket component. We replaced the valve and checkouts were successful. So it looks like we are good to go today as long as the weather cooperates with us. So our team is working towards an on-time liftoff of 11.04 p.m. Eastern. Today's mission is for our customer Echo Star and their Hughes Network Systems Division and will mark SpaceX's third Falcon Heavy mission this year and sixth operational Falcon Heavy mission overall. And if you've been following along, this is also our second mission in less than 24 hours. Late last night or early this morning, depending on where you're watching from, we were fortunate enough to find some good weather down in Florida and launched our 50th mission so far of 2023. We had liftoff at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time from our neighboring pad, Space Launch Complex 40. Back on 39A tonight with that great view you have on your screen, we have the Hughes Jupiter 3 Echo Star 24, or Jupiter 3 for short, on board the second stage. Jupiter 3 was built by Maxar and will be the largest commercial communications satellite ever to launch into geostationary orbit, weighing over nine tons. Once operational, Jupiter-3 will help meet demand for HughesNet satellite internet in rural areas of the United States and Latin America, as well as demand for Explore service for rural customers in Canada. In addition to supporting enterprise and government applications, Jupiter-3 will also power higher speed satellite internet service plans in North America, while helping to expand and enhance HughesNet across Mexico, Brazil, and South America. We'll have more about our customer and their payload later on during the show, so be sure to stay tuned. Now at just under T minus 13 minutes, all systems are currently go for an on-time liftoff of 11.04 p.m. Eastern. The vehicle started propellant loading around the T minus 50 minute mark and is nearly fully loaded with propellants. The range is ready to support and we have a 25% chance of violation for weather today, but we're moving forward with the countdown to see if we can find some clear weather in time for liftoff. Of course, if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. So as you can see on your screen, although a little bit obscured by that LOX cloud, Falcon Heavy is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means it can carry much larger payloads, not only to Earth's orbit, but to the Moon and Mars as well. Like the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is a two-stage launch vehicle. But the big difference is that the Falcon Heavy first stage is comprised of three cores and Falcon 9 has only one. That means that Falcon Heavy has 28 engines in total. Each one of the three boosters has nine M1D engines at the bottom, making for a total of 27 engines across the center core and both side boosters, which you have a great view of on your screen right now. The 28th engine, of course, is a Merlin vacuum engine on board the second stage, and that's what will power the payload to its final targeted orbit today. Altogether, the Merlin 1D engines at the base of Falcon Heavy produce 5 million pounds of thrust, which is equal to 18 747s at takeoff. In fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't run them all at full thrust at once until after liftoff. About two and a half minutes into flight, the two side boosters will separate from the center core and come back to Earth for simultaneous landings at landing zone one and landing zone two. 
each of the side boosters on either side of the center core are flying for the third time on today's mission, having previously supported USSF 44 and 67. If successfully recovered, the side boosters will be refurbished and used again on a future Falcon Heavy mission. Similar to previous launches, we'll be conducting a one-engine entry burn today. This allows us to shorten the length of the entry burn for the side boosters, ultimately allowing us to increase performance. And speaking of increased performance, we will not be attempting to recover the center core today. So if you look closely at your screen, you'll see that the center core doesn't have landing legs or grid fins attached. That's because this mission requires more performance than we have to be able to recover the center core, and that landing hardware isn't needed. But don't worry, today's launch should still be a very exciting one, especially if you're joining us from the Space Coast in Florida, where you should be in for some beautiful nighttime landing views. Moving up towards the top of the vehicle, once the first and second stages separate, the second stage will propel our payload into its intended orbit. The second stage for this mission is also debuting a new medium coast configuration. Just in case you didn't know, our second stages have three general configurations, standard, medium, three spacecraft, non power, so fuck. Hearing some chatter on the nets there. So we do use different configurations depending of that second stage, depending on how long the second stage needs to operate after launch. A medium coast kit, which is what we're using today, provides better performance for some missions and includes an added battery loaf or power pack a painted gray stripe on the outside of the fuel tank, and other hardware to make sure the fuel and stages systems operate as long as needed once we get to space. If you look very closely just above the countdown clock on your screen, you can see that stripe of gray paint. While in space, the paint will absorb heat from the sun in order to keep the second stage fuel warm enough for our long flight today. Now, as a quick note, payload deployment for Jupiter-3 is scheduled to occur after three second stage engine burns and will take place around the T plus three hour and 30 minute mark. So hopefully you'll stick with us. Now above the second stage is where our payload is safely enclosed inside of our carbon composite payload fairing halves. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, though, the fairing isn't needed anymore, so we'll jettison the fairing halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Both fairing halves supporting today's mission are also flight proven, just like our side boosters, with one half flying for its fifth time and the other for its sixth. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves again today as well with our recovery vessel, Doug. And now with just about T minus eight minutes and counting, here's a little bit more on our customer and our payload. For over half a century, we've been on a journey to connect people, enterprises, and things around the world. Innovation runs deep in our veins, from developing the two-way VSAT in the 1980s, to inventing satellite internet in the 1990s, to launching the first modern era telecommunication satellite in the 2000s. We've tackled the biggest connectivity challenges and applied our engineering excellence to uncover innovative ways to connect the unconnected. Since the launch of the first Hughes High Throughput Satellite, we have engineered some of the highest capacity broadband satellites in the world. And now, our latest and greatest innovation launches a new era of connectivity. Jupiter-3, the world's largest commercial communication satellite. 26 feet tall when stowed, it boasts 14 solar panels unfurled. This massive satellite was purpose-built and engineered like no satellite before. Hundreds of team members have devoted countless hours to bring Jupiter-3 to life. The highly anticipated next-generation ultra-high-density satellite doubles the size of the Hughes Jupiter fleet and brings total throughput to more than one terabit per second, enabling more capacity, better service, and faster speeds. With 300 highly concentrated spot beams, Jupiter-3 expands our reach to nearly 80% of the population across North and South America. The engineering ingenuity built into Jupiter-3 will expand the connected experience. 
For the family in Ohio, streaming movies on a Friday night. For the student in Mexico, expanding her horizons with access to technology and educational tools. For the farmer in rural Idaho, monitoring the weather each day to manage his crops. For the executive, flying from New York to Los Angeles, holding a meeting over first-class Wi-Fi in the sky. For the senior in Montana, consulting with his doctor by telehealth. For the ranger at a national park, coordinating in real time with emergency responders. For the mango grower in Brazil, expanding her family business nationwide and internationally. For the entrepreneur in Ecuador, promoting his business and taking customer orders. For the grandmother in Mississippi, meeting her new grandchild by video chat. All this and more as Jupiter 3 launches a new era of Join us. As a quick update, it looks like we actually don't have a recycle opportunity tomorrow, but weather has improved with only a 10% probability of violation. So we're looking great for liftoff. Next up, in preparation for liftoff, the clamp arms... Control back, retract in progress. There you go ahead and hear Mission Control has commented that we are hearing or we're getting ready for strong back retract. Um, which is when that large truss structure, or the, called the TE, or the strong back for short, will start to retract away from Falcon Heavy. Now, before we can retract the TE, the clamp arms have to open up from around the vehicle, which you can see on your screen right now, moving back into that fully retracted position. Now you have a great view on your screen of the strong back moving away from Falcon Heavy. Not only is the strong back being used right now to route umbilical lines up to the vehicle, it's also what we use to roll Falcon Heavy out to the launch pad and raise it into its vertical position. Just prior to liftoff, the strong back will retract all the way, all the way away from Falcon Heavy so that it can clear the launch pad. And the side core locks loads are complete. There's a the call out that we're moving toward locks load completion on Falcon Heavy. Center core lock load is complete. There's the call out that the center core lock load is complete. As always, those white clouds venting from around the side of Falcon Heavy are nothing to worry about. That's just some locks boiling off the surface of the internal tanks on board the vehicle. And when that boiled off locks comes into contact with the Florida air, it creates an actual cloud. Incredible views from the launch site down in Florida tonight. Stage two, locks load is complete. There's the final call out that locks loading is complete on Falcon Heavy. That means that the next major flight milestone we're listening for is startup. When you hear Mission Control call out that Falcon Heavy has entered startup mode, that means that the internal flight computers have taken over the countdown. That's also the point during the countdown where stage one and stage two begin to pressurize for launch. Ground gas close out.
Falcon Heavy is in startup. There's that call out that Falcon Heavy is in startup mode. With that, the only thing left is to hear Mission Control Launch Director give us the final go for launch. Falcon Heavy, go for launch. Great news out of Mission Control. So with just a little bit more than 30 seconds to go, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon Heavy and our Jupiter 3 spacecraft. Anyway, 30 seconds. We are just over 30 seconds into flight under the power of over 5 million pounds of thrust and Falcon Heavy is on its way to space. Right now we're throttling down in preparation for max Q, which is of course the moment of key. Power and telemetry nominal. Call outs there that power and telemetry are both looking good for Falcon Heavy. Again, what we're preparing for next is max Q, which is the peak mechanical stress on the rocket. So that is a critical- Falcon is supersonic critical flight milestone for us today. And with that supersonic call out, we know that Falcon Heavy is moving faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. There we've passed through Max Q. So now the engines are throttling up. Everything's looking good with the stage one trajectory, which is great news. Our side boosters are throttled all the way up right now, but the center core is operating a reduced power. We'll gradually begin reducing thrust from the side boosters to decrease forces on the vehicle structure as we approach our next major flight event, BECO. BECO, which stands for Booster Engine Cutoff, is expected at about two and a half minutes into flight. That's where we'll shut down the engines on the side boosters. And then following BECO, the side boosters will separate away from the center core and begin their trip back to Earth. The center core engines will then ramp up to full power and burn for approximately another minute, while the side boosters execute their boost back burns simultaneously. Incredible views of Falcon Heavy right now. And as a reminder, although we are not attempting to recover our center core due to performance today, we will be attempting to land those two side boosters on landing zones one and two, so we'll have great views for you on the right-hand side of your screen. Side booster separation confirmed. Side core separation. There, we've had confirmation of side core separation there. And shortly, those side boosters are going to begin the first of three burns prior booster to landing back, startup. back on land. There's the call out that we've had boost back begin. We're going to have several things happen in quick succession here. So some of the things we're looking for are Miko on our main engine and then those two entry and landing burns of the side boosters. On your screen right now, we have views, views of both of those side boosters on their way back to Earth. There we go over on the side right there. Following main engine cutoff of the center core, we are looking for stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES-1, or second engine start one, for the MVAC engine on board stage two. Shortly after that, we will also have fairing separation, so let's keep an eye on all, fair, all of those events happening back to back here in just a couple seconds. Booster boost back shutdown. There's confirmation that the boost back burn on both side Pico. boosters 
Has Stage completed. separation confirmed. Acquisition signal for Muta. Stage one FTS has saved center core. In back ignition. So you saw on your screen there, we had successful boost back burn on the side boosters, main engine cutoff on our center core, stage separation, and that beautiful view means that we have had second engine start one. That will wrap it up. Fairing separation confirmed. That wraps it up for our center core and our fairing halves tonight. So while stage two now continues on its journey to space, those fairing halves are currently falling back to Earth. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. With that, we know both vehicles, the center core and stage two, are on nominal trajectories. And of course, we're going to try to uh, recover those fairing halves again tonight using our recovery vessel, Doug. So next up, we'll be attempting to recover the two Falcon Heavy side boosters on land back at LZ-1 and LZ-2. Fun fact, landing zone two was built to support dual booster landings like the one we're attempting tonight. Now at the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land at those side-by-side -side landing pads, but they've picked up a lot of speed since then. So in just a few minutes, the side boosters will execute an entry burn, followed by a landing burn. Both of these burns are meant to slow the side boosters down rapid landing. If those landings are successful today, they will be the 211th and 212th landing of an orbital class rocket. But as I mentioned earlier, because of the additional performance required for this mission, the center core will be expended and we're not attempting to recover it. Entry burn should begin for those side boosters in just about 10 seconds. Side booster entry burn startup. There's confirmation from Mission Control that the entry burn has begun. Now each side booster has ignited just one engine in preparation for landing. Side booster entry burn shut down. There's confirmation that we have now shut down for the entry burn. Next coming up is our landing burn. And as a reminder, this will be a side three boosters FTS has saved. A three engine landing burn on each of those side boosters. starting to get some initial views in from those side boosters as they come back to Florida and expecting that landing burn to start here in just about 20 or 30 seconds. Both side boosters are transonic. Boosters are transonic on their way back to land at LZs 1 and 2. Five booster landing burn. Landing burn has started. Five booster landing leg deploy. Side booster landing confirmed. That is absolutely incredible, and as you can see, our team is thrilled. Stage two, yes, With that, we have successfully landed uh, both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zones one and two. That marks the 211th and 212th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. Next up, in just about 10 seconds, we are looking for a second engine cutoff one of the MVAC engine up in space. Confirmation of second engine cutoff one. Nominal orbit insertion. And that's great news that we're in a good orbit. So at this point, we'll be heading into a coast phase until our second relight of the MVAC engine around the T plus 26 minute mark. We'll come back to bring you live coverage of that second burn in about 15 minutes. But until then, sit back and enjoy the space tunes.
Russian signal for bomb. Welcome back to our coverage of the Jupiter 3 mission. If you're just joining us, we had an on-time liftoff at 11.04 p.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A. Coming up next is the second of three total burns that the second stage needs to execute before payload deployment. This burn should last about two minutes, and we're expecting it to begin here in just under 30 seconds. Ground station that we're passing may or may not be able to give us any live coverage of this burn. So we'll go ahead and listen in on the nets. There we go. There's stage two up in space looking great. You can, of course, also always follow along with the Stage 2 telemetry down in the bottom corner of your screen. Expecting about another 40 seconds until we should hear the call out for Second Engine Cutoff 2, or SECO 2, from Mission Control. looking at probably 15 seconds more on this burn of the Merlin vacuum engine. We're listening in now to Mission Control for that call out for SECO2 and nominal orbital insertion of the second stage. With that confirmation of successful second engine cutoff and nominal orbital insertion, we are entering another coast phase. Our third and final burn of the MVAC engine prior to payload deployment is scheduled to occur at the T plus three hour and 33 minute mark. So until then, stay tuned and enjoy those views of space.
Acquisition of signal heart of Bishock.
position of signal in the Maldives.
Acquisition signal art.
25th century AD. We sat there and looked at the rocket from Mars and you just boggled the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up, didn't it?
thanks again for joining us for tonight's Jupiter 3 mission. We've had a successful mission so far, and the next milestone coming up in the mission is the third and final burn of our second stage engine. The last MVAC burn is coming up here in just about 20 seconds, and we expect it to last just under 30 seconds. Great views from up in space while we're watching second stage too. Well, we didn't hear a call out there from Mission Control. We did see the second engine, uh, second engine on stage two relight for that third and final time. So now we're just waiting for confirmation. Nominal orbit insertion. And there we've got it, of nor nominal orbital insertion. Um, so there you saw, and as you just heard from Mission Control, that is our third and successful, our third successful burn for this mission. With that, we are tracking payload deploy coming up in, a just, in just about five minutes. So hang tight, we'll see you in a few.
Hello and welcome back once again to our coverage of the Jupiter 3 mission. We're coming up on the final milestone for this mission, payload deployment. The Jupiter 3 payload on board the second stage was built by Maxar and will be the largest commercial communications satellite ever to launch into geostationary orbit, weighing over nine tons. Once operational, the payload on board the second stage will help meet demand for HughesNet satellite internet in rural areas of the United States and Latin America, as well as demand for Explore service for rural customers in Canada. We're expecting payload deployment coming up here in just about 20 seconds. Payload deploy confirmed. There is that confirmation from Mission Control, and obviously you can see on your screen that we have had successful deployment of Jupiter-3. With that, we will bring our mission coverage to a close. We'd like to thank our customer, EchoStar, and their Hughes Network Systems Division for entrusting us with today's launch. We'd also like to thank the range and the FAA for licensing today's mission. And of course, we'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in. If you're interested in more launch content, head over to our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you again soon.